We're here on Hell Creek Bay, Fort Peck Reservoir, and this is Clint Thomas's place. We drove in here late at night and stayed here, and then we got up in the morning and uh, headed down the lake and camped out on the lake. This is a good place to come where a lot of ice fishermen stay and catch some big fish. Clint's got a lot of good walleye on the wall in there. We'll go take a look at that here in a bit, but uh, you can look his place up, Hell Creek Marina on Facebook, or you can just do a Google search and look up Hell Creek Marina. Fort Peck Reservoir and find it that way. It's got his phone number, you can get a hold of him. But he's got some nice places to stay up here. A lot of times he's booked up, you know, a year in advance. So you have to get it early, but uh, let's go inside and uh, take a look in the office, see what kind of big fish he's got in there. Got some big old fish on the wall, look at that. How big was that in there? 13.9. Woo! That's a 6.46 bass. He's four ounces under the state record. That walleye is 14.7. That walleye is 11.2, but he's actually a record. That's one of the largest males ever caught. Oh, really? How do you tell if it's a male? Uh, the taxidermist realized it when they sent him over to mount him. Huh. And then and that one's 11.6. That big one there is 12. And a 24 and a half pound, 44 inch northern. Yeah. I speared her. Oh, really? Yeah, you can see where I speared her there on the back. Yeah. And then that's a 17 pound Laker. Big old Laker. And then it's just all I got is a picture of it. This is my oldest daughter here. She got it hanging in her house. That's a 15 9 walleye there. 15 9. Was that caught in January? Uh, it was actually caught New Year's Day. Was it really? Right out here at the mouth of Hill Creek. You guys had good ice, huh? Yeah, it was a cold winter that year. It was 33 below that day. Those are some awesome fish right there. And you got some big ones back here. What about that one with the big old gut on it? Uh, that one was, I remember what it was, 10, 8. It looks bigger than that with that belly. And I found yeah. out last night, man, they got some teeth. This is this is just a nine pound walleye here, but it was my daughter's first walleye. When the first year we bought the marina, she uh -huh. was, I think, 10. And she was jigging for perch. And, Right down here in front of the marina, right oh, by really? the gas pump, and caught, caught him on that a one, huh? jigging rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! They were down there playing in the perch, and he come in and swallowed her hook. So how long you been here? How long you been at this place? Oh God, I bought it in 2000, fall of 2001. Our first season was 2002. Was it really? Huh? Been here ever since. Yeah. Was it just that, bare dirt basically, and you hauled everything in, or? No, a relative of my wife built it back in the 60s. And then they sold out to a corporation, which was Hell Creek Rec, which my father-in-law, my wife's dad, was part owner in. And then they had it for several years and sold it to some people from California. And they were here for two years and decided they didn't like it here. And then I bought it back. Well, it's been good. You turned it into a good place. A lot of people come here in the wintertime to ice fish. And yep. Clint's got a good place here. Yeah, I think this place was built in... I think the first thing here was the old A-frame that burnt down in these old cabins. And uh, that would have been, I think, 63. I noticed there's a bunch of houses up on the hill there. There's 50, 51 private cabins. Really? And those are, are those all pretty old? They've been here a long time? Some of them. The oldest one would be uh, uh, Watson Foster and Farron. And they would have put in here the same year the lake was built, which I think would have been... Well, first year they filled the lake, I think 43, 42, oh, really? 43. Way back then. Yeah. That's cool. But Clint's got all kinds of he's got all kinds of bait and tackle back here. He's got minnows. Where do you go to send your minnows? I mean, you got to go a long ways, don't you? About 250 miles. Yeah. <laughs> so he puts way. a lot of puts a lot of work and effort into stocking this place and keeping fishermen stocked. But uh, 500 miles on the minnows by the time I get home. <laughs> But it keeps them happy, and that's the minnows we used out there to catch those fish with, you know, the last couple of days. So, does a good job at that. We appreciate him. So, yeah. Oh, you got other jigs? artifacts around here in the hills too. Yeah, that's true. You know what? What is that? Triceratops horn. Is it really? That Nose is awesome. Horn. You know what? If you watch that first uh, Jurassic Park movie, there's a guy there, the main professor, and he's out there, and he's uh, at a dig site somewhere, you know, and it says. Fort Peck, Montana, right there. Right here. So it's just just yeah. right across the way there, huh? Uh, majority of all the T-Rexes found in the world all come out of the Hell Creek Formation right here. Oh, do they? Okay, huh? So there's a Hell Creek Formation and like a like yeah. a rock formation. That yeah, the archaeologists come down here every year. A lot of these dinosaurs that you see all over the world in museums, a lot of them come out of right here, Hell Creek. Uh, that's awesome. 
So you got Triceratops horn. What would this be? Is it that's just another, another piece of a horn? Piece of a horn there. Yep. Now there, I'm, I'm assuming that's pretty rare. There have to be. Yeah, to find them complete like mm -hmm. this one here, they're real rare. Mm -hmm. This one come off of our ranch, um, but that's a complete nose horn, all one piece. You can even see the root and the hump on it. Oh yeah. We so got my brother's got one over at the ranch. It's the top horn. It's about three and a half foot long. It's all one piece. Three and a half foot long. Yeah, the top top horn. And this is a front horn. Yep, so. that's the nose horn. Okay. You got some more stuff down here. Oh yeah. There's a big snail there, and there's a vertebrae and fossilized fish pieces. That's awesome, right? Laying all over out in the hills. It's like dinosaur fossil heaven right through here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. And it's fishing heaven too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at all these walleye on the wall. I mean, there's not many places you can go and just that's got this, you know. And it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So you provide a good service out here to people. We have a few tournaments on the lake. Governor's Cup, Hell Creek Tournament, Walleye Tournaments. Yeah. My son and I fish them. That's awesome. Just big fish on the wall everywhere up in here. And these are all caught right here, Fort Peck. Most, majority of these fish that are in here were actually not only caught out of Fort Peck, they were caught right here in Hell Creek Bay. Right here in the bay, huh? Yeah. It's a big right fish out here place. A lot of them, like I said, most of them was caught by the kids when they were little. So, I mean, there's a lot of them when the kids were little. I didn't let them get out of sight. So, I mean, they were fishing within sight of the marina a lot yeah. of days. Fish them up right out here, right here in front. Huh. How many people you think you pull off the bottom out here? Uh, That's kind of your specialty, isn't it? Well, I retrieve four wheelers. We travel from, we do, you know, shit, I've been to Georgetown Lake, uh, Swan Lake, Nelson Reservoir, all the way down to Sakakawe in North Dakota. We do retrievals. Yeah. Four wheelers themselves, I couldn't honestly tell you. I quit counting two years ago when we broke 100. <laughs> um, all total between pickups and vehicles, side by sides, four wheelers, I'd say probably 150, 160 rigs. That uh, now, are they all running into rifts? Is it just running through rifts or around points? Or? You hear a lot of horror stories about people falling through the ice. And uh, not exactly true. First ingredient yeah. to falling through the ice, you got to have ice. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Majority of the rigs that go through are in the dark. Some of them alcohol related, a lot of them alcohol related. And what do you think about 90% are drunk or 95? All 90. 90% are drunk, yeah. Or had, or had been. But a lot of it's dark too and not paying attention. But majority of the four wheelers that go in are in pressure ridge or methane hole. They, I mean, they didn't fall through the ice, they drove right off into open water. Yeah, so you got to be careful out here then. You know, these pressure ridges, I mean, they can be a foot wide, they can be 40 feet wide, and a lot of it. You know, they go out fish till after dark, and they went around three pressure ridges and only remembered two coming home. <laughs> yeah. um, third one got them. Because of the alcohol, maybe, huh? But that's why that's why very few people, I mean, if they were falling through thin ice, you'd lose a lot of people because it's hard to get out. Yeah. And in this case, you fall off in a pressure ridge, the ice was a foot thick right until you drove off the edge. So, I mean, you're able to swim over and climb right out because the ice was good. Yeah. There just wasn't any there. Huh. And that's what gets most of them because... You know, if you're doing 35 mile an hour on a four-wheeler in the dark, by the time you see water and headlights, it's yeah. too late. You yeah. ain't stopping. Then you're sliding and you're going in. You're, you're going to get wet. You might yeah. as well take a deep breath because huh. um, hitting the brakes is just going to leave fancy skid marks. Yeah, um, and, you, and you've got a special underwater apparatus, don't you? Ah, uh, depends. Like four a camera and, and four wheelers and stuff. I just use quenches in the ice. I got underwater cameras for hooking them and stuff, so I don't have to dive anymore. Yeah. Uh, vehicles and stuff, that's a little trickier. I got my own system that I invented, but um, yeah. pickup, I can do a pickup in about 12 hours if it's less than 100 foot deep. Yeah. It takes about 12 hours to put it back on the top. Yeah. And then you got to, like a four wheeler, get it up and going. What do you, What is it you charge for to get it go yeah, running again and pull it out? Depends on how deep they are and how big of a pain in the butt they are. Average four wheeler will run four to six hundred bucks to get it out and get it running. It takes yeah. about an hour to get it out and about an hour to get it running by the time you service it. Side by sides, I usually charge five hundred to a thousand bucks to get them out and get them running. Pickups are spendy. I won't <laughs> touch a pickup for less than five thousand dollars. And you were saying the government, right, mandates that you have them out within a certain time where they'll come most, and get most them out places, and charge you a huge amount of money. One thing. Most places you got fourteen days to get them yeah. out. Otherwise, you start getting penalized and uh, fined and. You start, I mean, you have, by law, you have to get them out. You can't leave them. Yeah. And so. Because of all the oil and all the gas and stuff in there. Yeah. Polluting the water. Or, I don't know what the reason is, but uh, they, they want, want them, them out. out. Yeah. And uh, 
they're usually, like I said, big vehicles are tough, but four wheelers, side by sides, they're pretty pretty easy. Um, you know, biggest biggest one I've ever retrieved so far is a one ton diesel Suburban. Um, a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, huh? That's crazy. So I, yeah, pulling them out every year. How many do you think you pull out in a year? You think on the average? Oh, I suppose I do on an average year. Fort Peck Lake, dozen. Dozen or so. Um, How many of them are staying right here at your place? Oh, I usually do four or five here at Hell Creek every year. The rest, yeah. you know, scattered around Lake. I do Rock Creek, Fort Peck, Devil's Creek, all of these sites. You know, I do do all of them, but usually around a dozen. Uh -huh. um, but I suppose in a year's time between other lakes and traveling, I probably do 15 to 20 rigs a year. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That well, makes, makes some pretty good money that way, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the busiest year I'll have, the better the ice, the busier I am. You know, if the ice is a little thin and shaky, very seldom do you ever have to retrieve a four-wheeler because everybody's being careful. You get 20, 30 inches of ice, and people get brave and bulletproof and quit thinking. And the thicker, the better the ice, the more four-wheelers sink because yeah. they quit paying attention. They yeah. let their guard down. And like I said, most of it's just smoked off into open water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit factor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is Clint's place out here, Hell Creek Marina. House a lot of ice fishermen in the winter time and summer fishing too. Got a nice place out here. Good place to come. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so it's about the only place to stay for how many miles around? No, 26 to Jordan. Yeah. That's the closest. Yeah. Hell Creek Marina, here it is.